tap, tap in. Time to tap in. Let's see who's getting exposed on Streets 99.3. Streets 99.3, your trust of hip-hop and R&B. C-Dub, the plug is in here. And man, I love bringing people in here because I love exposing people and letting you guys know these awesome people is right here in the Middle Tennessee area doing some awesome good in the hood. I got our dental expert, our Streets 99.3 dental expert is going to be here and tell us some valuable information you need to know about your teeth. I have Dr. Tiffany Garrison Jeter with Definition Dental Studio. How you doing, man? Hey, hey, I'm doing all right. How you doing? Good, good, good. Tell everybody a little bit about you and history and what got you off into dentistry. Well, I'm a Nashville native, so I graduated from MLK and Tennessee State University. Okay, go Big Blue. Whoop, whoop. And then I went to dental school at University of Louisville. Okay. Um, I got into dentistry. Um, when I was little, I was always into watching like medical shows, mm-hmm. uh, ER, all those kind of things. I was like, I knew it's going to be somebody's kind of doctor. <laughs> so then I was like, oh, I want to be either an OBGYN or a dentist. Mm-hmm. Babies come at any time of the day yep. or night. Yeah. I like my sleep. So I chose dentistry <laughs> okay. uh, for my career, and the rest is history after that. That's what's up, man. So how long have you been doing the whole dentistry practice? I've been a dentist for 11 years, okay. telling, my, telling my age now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been in private practice for um, five years. Next month will be five years for me so okay. in private practice, but 11 years total as a dentist. That's good. That's awesome. Awesome. I, my listeners here who chimed in, some of my street family who's tuned in, had a couple of questions. They wanted to know about dentistry, so I said, you know what? I'm going to go grab the expert, and we're going to get into these questions. Can you explain the importance of regular dental checkups and cleaning and maintaining oral health? So um, maintenance and preventative nature is key. You want to try to get to things before it gets to be too big. Mm -hmm. If you let things go, it gets more painful and more costly. Mm -hmm. So the preventative visits kind of help you make sure that things are taken care of when it's small. So how often do you think that someone needs to come for these preventive maintenance At least once a year, but the recommended is twice a year. Okay, every six months. Every six months. Okay. Mm -hmm. How often should individuals replace their toothbrushes and the best way to maintain good uh, good oral health, good oral hygiene while they're at home? So you need to change your toothbrush quarterly, so every three months. Or if you I'm (laughs) failing on that. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Mine probably every once. Every time we go out of town. No. <laughs> well, you go out of town a lot, so that might that might be good. Or you can change it after you've been sick because you don't want the bacteria and the germs that have been in your mouth harboring mm-hmm. while you're sick to stay on your toothbrush. Um, so after you've been sick or every quarter. Okay. I'm some to other good tips is that some people keep their toothbrush in the same place where, where they flush the toilet. You don't want to do that. Why? Because when you flush the toilet and all that stuff happens and all that bacteria and poo and everything else goes everywhere that bacteria lands on your toothbrush and then you put that toothbrush in your mouth and that's gross so don't keep your toothbrush where you flush the toilet at or if you do make sure you have a cover over your toothbrush we don't need no doo-doo brushes okay (laughs) and i don't need you coming to me talking with that doo-doo breath on your brush exactly so you recommend getting some covers to go on top of the toothbrush Mm -hmm. okay get some covers for them toothbrushes folks um can you share some tips on preventing cavities and gum disease, especially for kids? Um, so a lot of people think that you only get cavities by eating sweets, and that's not particularly the case. Really? Really. So um, your mouth having an acidic vi- environment makes the enamel weaken and more prone to um, cavities. So a lot of people these days are doing a lot of juicing and um, making smoothies and different mm-hmm. things like that with acidic fruits like um oranges and strawberries and different things like that so if you're on your health kick or you're feeding your kids a lot of fruit you want to make sure they're swishing their mouth out with water after they have the fruit or the smoothie so that that acid is not sitting on their teeth all day and eating away at their enamel so swishing with water after having acidic beverages like fruit juice fruit smoothies um, sodas different things like that and also candy so that so so just rinsing the mouth out with some water, with water. can help out. It, it makes the pH of your mouth less acidic, and if the more acidic your mouth is, the more prone you are to having cavities. Man, I learned something new today. I, I always thought that you know back in the day, you don't eat all that candy; mm-hmm. it's gonna make your teeth fall out. But there's other factors of that that can play a part in it. Okay, can you share um, what's the connection between oral health and overall health? 
And are there any systematic diseases that can affect dental health? Well, people like to separate um, the mouth from the rest of the body. It's all connected. You don't just have your mouth and then your body stops there. It's all connected. So the bacteria and the pathogens and the inflammation that's in your mouth, if you have inflammation in your mouth, you're going to have it throughout your whole body. So there's things like um, cardiovascular disease that is more prominent when you have inflammation in the mouth. So Mm -hmm. if you have the the tartar, which is made up of a lot of bacteria, causes inflammation. Mm -hmm. Those same plaques that clog your your heart arteries, it's the same plaques that's in your mouth. And so if you're swallowing and eating and swallowing that bacteria, you're more prone to having um, cardiovascular disease like heart uh, heart attacks, um, stroke, high blood pressure, different things like that. Also, um, people who have inflammation in their mouth, it tends to raise your blood glucose. So if you are diabetic, Mm -hmm. um, and that's um, kind of correlated with um, gum disease as well. And diabetics are more prone to having uh, loose teeth and tooth loss and slowed healing. So those are things that we see in the mouth um, as well. Also, for my guy listeners out there, having gum disease has been associated with erectile dysfunction. Really? So some of y'all can't get it up. You need to make sure you come see the dentist for your routine cleaning so we can get that bacteria and get the blood flowing to all the places that it needs to flow. Oh, my goodness. So uh, some of y'all think y'all need the blue pill. You might not need the blue pill. Exactly. You might, you might need a little cleaning going on in your mouth. Exactly. So make sure you guys go see Dr. G <laughs> for that. I'm giving all the knowledge to I, God. I really I'm appreciate it. all my secrets. We have to because, um, I mean, you enlightened me. Now I feel some type of way. Like, I need to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I've eaten everything and right, you know what I'm saying? So what are some safe and effective teeth whitening options for those who are looking to improve their smile? Um, so first, a, a healthy smile starts with just doing healthy habits at home. You can't not brush your teeth ever and then think that your teeth are going to be nice and white. So mm-hmm. at first, it just starts with preventative care and at-home care. Um, other things you could do um, is to limit drinking uh, and eating things like that can stain your teeth, like wine, red wine, um, coffee, um, black tea, different things like that. So just kind of watching your diet or how you're going to eat it. Like if you're going to eat something, eat and again, rinse your mouth out, or if you're going to drink those beverages, drink them through a straw. But as far as like whitening products, you can do, um, you can dip your toothbrush in some baking soda or, you know, maybe like once a week. You don't want to do it too often because it can be too abrasive. So a lot of people are using those charcoal whitening. You don't want to use charcoal whitening powders on a regular basis because it can be too abrasive to your enamel, making your enamel thin, making your teeth sensitive. So dipping your toothbrush in baking soda maybe like once a week can mm-hmm. help remove surface stains. You can so you do, dip it in, the, in, the, in there and brush your teeth? Uh-huh. You wet your toothbrush. Like even back in the day, like um, when our parents and grandparents didn't have toothpaste, mm-hmm. They just dip their toothbrush in that baking soda and brush their teeth with baking soda, switch their mouth out with peroxide and water, and that was what people did. Well, those are still good things to keep your um, your teeth white. The active ingredient uh, ingredients in teeth whitening products is peroxide. Mm. So those are things you can do to uh, maintain your white smile on a budget. Or you can do um, Crest White Strips works very well. I was going, I was going to ask you about those. Yeah, they really do. They really do work well. I actually use those myself because I can't tolerate the in-office procedure mm-hmm. because it's a very strong concentration of whitening. So I personally, with my white teeth, I use the white strips at home. Okay, that's pretty cool. So, now, is there any X amount of times you need to brush your teeth to keep them white? No. Okay. But you need to brush your teeth at least twice a day. At least twice a day. And floss and rinse and repeat. <laughs> <sighs> and swish around water. Yes. Swish <laughs> Can you discuss the importance of a balanced diet and the impact it has on oral health? Uh, just goes back to the same thing we already said. Um, just, you know, keeping your nutrition, make sure that your, your mouth is healthy because you don't want to have a dry mouth or an acidic mouth. So different types of foods are more acidic. So you might want to switch up your diet in that manner or once again switch up your mouth with water afterwards um just having um good nutrition make your immune system better so you're more able to not have as much inflammation in your mouth and in the rest of your body Mm -hmm. so it's never a bad idea to have a balanced nutrition okay good 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 what advice uh do you have for individuals with dental anxiety or phobias about making their dental visit and you know how do you make it more comfortable for them So the first thing you need to do is to do your research. You want to go to a provider who's going to 
um, cater to your needs and and address your needs. You don't want someone who's just going to be like, oh, you're going to be all right. Open up and shut up. Okay, like you have to find a provider who who caters to your needs. First off. Secondly, you definitely don't want to put it off because, like I said before, the more that you put it off, the more painful things are. So it makes an experience that's already not pleasant even worse. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then secondly, we've got good technology out there. There's uh, nitrous laughing gas that we can give you. There's what I call the happy pill, which is like a medicine that um, we give you to kind of like relax your dental anxiety before um, the treatment is done. A a, a, a A A A Mm pill. Okay. So Um, how long does that take? Well, you got to have a driver because you're going to be, you know, under the influence. Um, but typically we have the per- either the person comes in and we give them a pill and have them sit for an hour so that it can kind of do its thing. And then we treat the patient and then the, their driver takes them home. Um, that's one option. Um, you still have all your senses. You're, you're still awake. You're just you're just chilling. It's a mm-hmm. nice little, little, little buzz chill. Kind okay. Of thing. And then other option is to find a provider that does um, IV sedation where they do the I Like when you go to the oral surgeon, mm-hmm. and they put you to sleep. They do the IV in your arm. Mm-hmm. They put you to sleep and you wake up and the treatment is done. Yeah, everything is done. Mm-hmm. So there's different options out there. But the number one is to find a provider that you're comfortable with. I know in my office, I get a lot of people who have dental anxiety. And it's simply because nobody even listened to them. So what I like to do is I have the patient in. I ask them what their concerns are, what's bothering them previous history what went well what went bad so that we can you know have them in a relaxed environment and, and listen to them people just want to be listened to a lot i know that's right um uh, yeah because i the dentist is cool i think i had this bad stigma of just and then you just hear that grinding and it's just the bad feeling but after you tap somebody and you talking with them and give you that ease and maybe I should take a little pill. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I call it the happy pill. <laughs> the happy pill. Can you share some insights on proper dental care for seniors, including uh, issues like dent- dental care and maintaining oral health as we age? So um, as we age, we lose manual dexterity. So like you may have an elderly person who, who thinks that they're brushing and doing things properly, but they're their hand coordination is not moving like it needs to be or it's not getting all the areas. So for the geriatric population, I do recommend uh, electric toothbrush. So Mm -hmm. that way it can rotate and, you know, all you got to do is just move it around so you Mm -hmm. make sure that you're getting everywhere. Are those those good toothbrushes? Yes. Okay. Um, I definitely would recommend ones that go in a circle. So there are some that just vibrate only, Mm -hmm. but then there's others that go in a circle similar to what we use when you're in the dental office. Mm -hmm. So those are the ones I recommend, uh, Crest Oral-B. They're not giving me any money for this plug, but Crest (laughs) Oral-B has a very nice um, electric toothbrush that you can get um, Amazon. Walmart, different places like that, or you can go on my Amazon store and you can purchase. Oh, you got an Amazon store? I got, you know, I got all the all the plugs. I got an Amazon store with all my top uh, dental recommendations and. And we're gonna put that. We're gonna put that in the bio we'll down there at the bottom in the description, <laughs> so we can order that. Cause I mean, I, I don't know what to order, and I know you don't know what to order. So I got the expert on the show, so she can tell us what we need to order. Okay, exactly. keep them teeth clean, and keep them shining. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got any the last words you want to let the people know about um, just general dental practices and and things they can do at home and keeping a perfect white smile. All I can say is that you don't have to floss all of your teeth, just the ones you want to keep. You don't have to floss all your teeth, just the ones you want to keep. And I hope you want to keep all your teeth. Exactly. You know, <laughs> some people just don't want the back one. They want the front ones because they can see you on Facebook. Let me talk about that before we go. Oh. Okay. Side teeth matter, people. Okay. So it's not just about beauty. It's about function as well. So if you notice, like the only thing that stops the tongue from spreading and getting bigger is coming into contact with teeth. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have any side teeth, your tongue just spreads, spreads, spreads. And then you're talking like this because your tongue is so big. That's first off. Secondly, not having teeth on the side ages you. You know, I'm Dr. Mrs. Pretty, so I don't, I'm not trying to have us age. But when you don't, your teeth support your face. So mm-hmm. if you don't have side teeth, you start looking sunken in. Sunken in on the look, side. And you look old before your time. Like a skeleton. And there's affordable options 
to replace some missing teeth. I know people think all oh, implants are really, really expensive, and they are because it's a good option. But there's other things you can do to fit your desired dental treatment into your budget. Payment plans, different options like partials, different things like that. Okay. Well, I sure appreciate you, Tiffany, jumping on the show and giving us some information. How can my Streets family get in contact with you in case they have more questions or maybe you want to be a new patient of yours? So um, the office number is 615-784-3394. Website's www.definitiondentalstudio.com. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, all the TikToks, all the things. She on social media everywhere. Everywhere. I don't, everywhere. Do, I don't do Twitter. I'm too old for Twitter. I know that's... <laughs> do everything else. <laughs> follow us on social media. Uh, follow me on social media at DJCDub615. Uh, you can also follow Streets993, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And uh, stay connected, man. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification, man. And we'll see you in the next video. Keeping you locked out here in these streets. Follow us on social media at Streets993. And check out more interviews online at Streets993.com.